All right, today we got a 2005 60 diesel uh, F250, and we are gonna diagnose a crank no start. Um, I have a suspicion that it is oil, an oil, high pressure oil leak, but let's get into it. First thing I did was get in there and just try to crank it. And I already knew that it probably was going to just not do anything because I know that it's been sitting. The seller told me it's been sitting for like six months. So I knew the batteries were probably dead because he probably cranked on it a bunch. And, and that was correct. So there was no, no movement. I put my battery charger on it, charged both batteries for a day each, and um, then took them to AutoZone, had them test them. They said they were bad, so we got new battery here, new battery here I'm about to put in, and we're going to uh, put those in and crank it, see what kind of stuff comes up on our scan gauge. One thing we're going to do to try to prolong our new battery life is I got dielectric grease and um, these felt terminal protectors. You can also buy it in a pack that comes with these protectors and like a little pack of um, the the grease that it's like they call it terminal grease but it's just dielectric grease so if you already have that you can just buy these save yourself a couple bucks um, and you can pick those up at any auto store so we're going to put those on with a good amount of dielectric grease to protect our ter terminals from corrosion. All right, I got my terminal felt things and dielectric grease, but I'm also gonna clean up these connector point, the terminal clamps. Uh, got one of these, pull that cap off, and we're just, you know, in, out, in, in, you know, twisting, and clean up that inside ring. Keep going until you can kind of see the brass color and have all that corrosion wiped out and that shiny, shiny orange uh, brass color that's what you want or copper I'm not sure whatever uh, that's what you're looking for make sure you're to make sure it's clean and ready to put back on all right we got our batteries all connected on both sides so now we're gonna hop in and crank it and get some data from our scan gauge um, one thing you want to be careful of when you're got a crank no start issue is letting your batteries get too low so you want to crank a little bit and uh, then put a battery charger on your batteries just to make sure they don't get too low. You don't want to destroy your batteries. So be aware of that when you're cranking. If you're cranking for a long time, um, you, you want to make sure you take care of your batteries. One thing to listen for before you're even looking at your scan gauge is listening for the injector clatter. So I'm going to turn it forward and we'll see if we can hear it on the video. But you should hear clicking of your injector. So let's listen. So I'm hearing a lot of that clicking like you heard, hopefully. Um, so that gives me a good indication that my injectors are all functioning. So that's probably not our issue. Uh, so now I got a little scan gauge here. Um, try to get it to focus. Um, if you don't have one of these, that's fine. You just need something that will read some of these values here I'm about to talk to tell you about. Um, if you want one of these, I'll have the link in the description. Um, so one of the easy checks we can do is our FICOM. This is our FICOM voltage. Man, that's annoying that that keeps shutting off. And then we have FICOM sync. So FICOM sync is going to be zero until you turn the key forward and then it should turn to one. So let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. So if I turn, or when I crank, it should turn to one. Sorry, not when the key forward engine off, not cranking, it's going to be zero. So let's watch when we crank it. All right, and as you can see, uh, it does go to one. So that tells us that we have FICOM voltage because we're up to 47. If you have anything below 40, you might want to, um, that might be a problem. I'm going to link a video from Diesel Tech Ron that talks about the FICOM and um, what you should check for. Uh, that's where I learned a lot about these crank no starts is Diesel Tech Ron. So I'll, I'll link a couple of his videos so you can go check those out. Um, the other thing that we wanted to look at is ICP, which is your um, oil pressure, and IPR, which is um, 
the engine brain sends a message to the IPR to open or close depending on whether it wants more or less oil pressure. So we want it to be between 15 and 85, but when we're cranking, we want it at probably 85 because that means it's um, telling it to build oil pressure. And if you saw when I was cranking, the ICP was staying right at zero, which means we probably have a huge oil leak um, or our H-pop, the high pressure oil pump, is not working at all or possibly the, the lower pump is not working at all. So we're going to do a couple other things. One thing, oh, I missed it. We're going to, ICV stands for the ICP uh, voltage. We're going to check that too. All right, so here we got the ICP voltage here. That's what ICV means. And we're at 0.23 which that's a, about what um, you'd expect. Um, another quick thing we can do to check and make sure that it's not just a sensor issue is unplug the ICP sensor and see if it starts then. So let's try that. We're on the passenger side here. The ICP sensor for um, late 2004 models and up is gonna be right here on the side of the engine. So I'm gonna just get my hand in there. You just wanna pop that clip up and pull back. And then we got that off, so now we're going to try to crank again. If you have a 2004 or 2003, the early style, your ICP is going to be back behind your turbo back there. Um, and a lot more of a pain to get to, but you can still do this. Alright, so we're going to try to crank again with the ICP unplugged. Yep. And if you noticed up here, our needle never came up at all, which means we're probably not getting any base oil pressure. Um, but we can do one other thing to check that out. Let's go to that. Next thing we're going to do is take our oil filter cap off so that we can check for base oil pressure. I got a little tool here um, that fits this. And when you uh, flip it over, it fits that. I will link this in the description. It's a handy little piece if you have one of these 6 O's to have around. Um, we're going to take this off and then we're going to jump the starter so that we can watch and see if we have oil coming up in here. And then we got our starter wire right here. Uh oh, man, I need two hands, it's breaking. So you just pull it out here and then we're going to touch this pin in there to our positive terminal and that's going to crank the engine for us. Make sure your, your key is not in. Uh, you just want the engine to turn over so we can check for base oil pressure. Move that. All right. Um, so what we're going to be looking for is oil filling up in here. All right. So we're going to touch our starter wire to our positive terminal here, and we're going to look in here and be looking for the oil to come up and how fast it will. So let's go ahead. So we did have oil come up, which makes me think we do have base oil pressure. All right, the next thing we're going to check is our IPR valve, which is that thing right back there. I'm trying to point at it without... It's that guy right there. You got to pull this metal piece back, which I don't think I'm going to be able to film. It's too tight. And then unplug it, and then we have a special tool here um you're gonna use this you're gonna put the fitting part on there slide that in and then i have this guy that um i'm hoping is gonna help me um get in there without having to remove a bunch of stuff you may have to take out this uh let's see if i can get like this bolt right here it's hard to see can't get my camera to focus so this guy right there uh, to get more hand space. I have small hands, so I think I'm going to be able to do it without removing that. But um, you might need to take that out. I believe it's a 8 metric or 8 or 10. Can't remember. Um, and just take that out and then throw it back in once you get your IPR out. Alright guys, I got my IPR out. And just as I suspected, I have a hole in my screen. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but 
uh, the piece of the screen, I can see it in there, and it is holding this open, which would be why we're having a no start situation and no oil pressure because this cannot close and help build the oil pressure. So, okay, so I have a new IPR right here. If you uh, took this out and there was nothing wrong, but you do not have this Y part in your screen, you may want to get a kit to replace your screen because. The ones that don't have this Y piece in here were more likely to fail and break off and go through. So uh, you may want to replace that while you have it out. Um, but I got a new one here. We're going to plug it in and uh, see if that fixes our issue. This one's actually used, so I know it doesn't look completely new. Um, I just had it sitting around from another repair I did. So um, we're going to try this one out and see what happens. All right, we're about to start it. Let's turn the key forward. I'm hearing the injector clatter. All right, now we're gonna watch our scan gauge. Still not building ICP. We're gonna try to crank it several times to see if um, stuff needs to, just takes a while for the oil to fill in. Seems how it's been sitting a minute without any oil pressure. So I'm gonna crank it a few more times off camera and we'll see what happens. So we did get it to start, uh, which is awesome. Hopefully this helps you if you have a similar problem. I'm gonna be adding a bunch of links for some other Crank No Start videos that um, solve some other problems that you might have, like the Fickum. Um, and Diesel Tech Ground is a great resource if you're just getting started in 6.0s. That's where I learned a lot of my stuff. Hopefully you find this helpful. I'm gonna be making some more videos with this truck. We're doing some interior work, because. Um, I got some some messed up seats here. You know, we're going to be repairing that and our armrest. We're going to repair that. And I got some issues going on with my cluster um, that I'm going to try to make some videos on that. So keep a lookout if you have any of those problems or want to uh, keep up with the fixing up this, this 2005 6 0. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. That helps me be able to make more content um and feed my family so i appreciate you guys stay independent out there